Riyad Salame leaves his post as central bank governor today after 30 years. He faces this string of alleged corruption charges at home and abroad. And of course, as you know very well, Lebanon's economy is in despair. So how will history remember Salame and was he good for Lebanon? He leaves a terrible legacy of an economy that is living through the worst financial crisis in history as we know it in the past 200, 300 years. Real GDP is down by over 40 percent. We have triple digit inflation. Food inflation is running at 350 percent. The pound has lost 98 percent of its value. Deposits of people are frozen in the banks. There are informal capital controls. And there's a whole string of things, the most important being that Lebanon is losing its human capital. Many people have migrated. And there are no prospects of any positive moves in the future. So as you pointed out, um, we don't have a government president. We have a caretaker government. and. The prospects of financial and economic reforms are very dim, given this political landscape. And as you say, all of this made more complex by the fact that Lebanon still doesn't have a president. The Lebanese people have been in the streets robbing their own banks, trying to take deposits out of the system. So what needs to be done now and what is the pathway forward to restore trust and credibility and independence at the BDL? Well, you need to undo many of Riyad Salami's policies. Um, he is directly responsible, in my view, for conducting monetary and exchange rate policy that has lent, led to the collapse that we have seen. Um, he actually conducted a Ponzi scheme whereby he was trying to protect a highly overvalued Lebanese pound by increased borrowing, particularly from the banks. The banks brought in deposits from Lebanese expatriates around the world. So what we're talking about when you talk about the collapse is the loss of savings for several generations of Lebanese. So that, that's really part of the legacy. You need to restore trust and governance. I think you rightly point out that's the main thing that you need to do. That means reform of governance at the central bank and restructuring of the central bank itself. There are losses in excess of $75 billion at the central bank. Um, you need to limit the terms of the governor and the vice governor. He's lived through six terms, five terms as governor, six-year terms. So limit them to four years, once renewable. You need to have a complete separation of monetary and fiscal policy. You need to unify exchange rates from the current multiple distortionary exchange rates that you have. And you have to stop any quasi-fiscal deficits. So this has to happen very quickly. And most important of all, you need to restructure the banking and financial system. Have a bank resolution authority, as happened in other countries that have gone through crises. And as well, of course, fiscal sustainability is going to be key. Uh, there are many demands made by the IMF since the staff level agreement was made. Um, back in last year, in 2022, in April. Nothing really has been achieved. So a whole set of reforms that need to be undertaken, both at the central bank and at the level of the fiscal authorities. And do you believe, NASA, that the IMF is Lebanon's last best hope? I think the IMF is the only choice for Lebanon simply because politicians don't have the courage and don't have the competence and there's too much corruption going on. They don't want reforms because they view the reforms as not serving their own interests. So the only way to move forward is to bring in the IMF that will impose conditions. Those conditions, had they been applied when we first discussed with the IMF in 2020, would have been trivial compared to the losses that we have happened, we have, ha have happened in Lebanon uh, in the past four years. This is the fourth year of crisis. Uh, it is incredible that nobody has held, been held accountable. Uh, the central bank and this governor were the primary respo people responsible for the crisis, and yet there's been no accountability. 
There have been no sessions of parliament questioning why it is that we are in crisis, why it is that people don't have access to their deposits. Um, this has led, of course, uh, means that you have an illiquid and insolvent banking sector, um, and the string of problems goes on. Uh, people have lost not only their deposits, but remember that anybody who had any Lebanese pounds has, been, has seen that Le those Lebanese pounds melt away. That means pensions, social, social security, and the like. On the other side, um, you've got a reduction in the level of public debt, of Lebanese pound public debt, but at the cost of an enormous wealth transfer. I think that the transfer of wealth that took place in Lebanon is probably one of the biggest in history in per capita terms or as a percentage of GDP. Enormous losses uh, for all generations. Indeed. And when it comes to holding those accountable, the question is, where do you start? Because with an entire system at fault, it's almost impossible to pinpoint a single person to be to blame here. But uh, NASA, I digress. With regards to some of the reforms that are being proposed here, one uh, possible remedy is this idea to float the exchange rate. What impact do you think that policy would have and would it be effective in restoring economic trust and credibility in any way? Currently, at the moment, you have something called Sairafa, which is a platform run by the central bank. It lacks any transparency and completely opaque, and is used as an instrument, really, to subsidize various types of imports and to help politicians and their cronies have access to the scarce foreign exchange reserves that have been, that have been drawn down by some 75% over the past four years. So what you need to do is to unify exchange rates, move to flexible exchange rates, but also have a transparent mechanism for exchange rate determination. That is to move on to a platform like you have in the rest of the world, around on Reuters or Bloomberg, where you know who the participants are, you know what the amounts are, you know the bid-ask spreads. That needs to happen. But at the same time, the objective of monetary policy has got to be containing inflation, not undertaking the financing of government, which is what has been going on for the past four years. Uh, as government revenues collapsed, mm. uh, government turned to the central bank for its financing, and in particular for the financing of highly subsidized imports, fuel, pharmaceuticals, all sorts of goods. But unfortunately, many of those goods highly subsidized ended up going across the border into Syria and to other countries. So at best, maybe 20% of the subsidized imports um, actually reached the poor and needy in Lebanon. And just to remind you, um, according to the World Bank, some 80% of the population in Lebanon is now poor, and some 50% is in food poverty. This is incredible when you think of the numbers we're talking about to what was, at the time, a middle-income country. All of this has collapsed in the space of four years. So change in monetary policy, but you also yeah. need debt sustainability and fiscal sustainability. Indeed. Um, Nasser, just before I let you go, who do you believe will be the next central bank governor and the next president of Lebanon? Well, for the central bank governor, uh, it's straightforward. As Riyad Salami leaves today, Article 25 of the Money and Credit Code, our banking law, uh, implies that the first vice governor, uh, Asif Mansouri, will actually take over. So that is straightforward. There's no crisis from that point of view. He needs to assume responsibility um, and take on the job, along with the, the other vice governors. Insofar as the President of the Republic is concerned, that's an entirely different matter. You have a highly fragmented, fractured political landscape uh, with one set of political actors, Hezbollah, Amal, and their allies, trying to promote Suleiman Frangiyi, who is viewed um, as a pro-Syrian, potentially pro-Iranian president. And you have opposition on the yeah. other side that has not been able to coalesce a one, a long, for one single candidate, except for Jihad Azur from the IMF. 
Nevertheless, um, it does not yes. look like we'll have a president very soon.